Greetings. My name is Mike Bankhead. I am your host. I am a bass player and songwriter from Dayton, Ohio. And this weekend, Saturday the 17th of September, I'm playing a gig at an ice cream shop. You heard me. I'm going to be at an ice cream shop playing music. Does that sound strange to you? Would you like to know how that's happening? Well, listen to this episode of... The You Could Be My Aramis podcast, and you'll find out. I welcome as my guest Matthew Kirk, who owns Owen's Corner Cone in Yellow Springs, Ohio. Hey there, Matthew. Thank you for joining me. Hey, happy to be here, Mike. Thanks for the invitation. Let's let's start simple. What do you do? What do I do? That's a good question. Well, I'm. My my number one job is uh is is stay at home dad. That's my primary gig. And uh, I guess those last couple of years I wanted to be a little more active, and so I uh, took on a couple little projects around our community. One of which was uh, reopening the local ice cream shop that didn't open last year, Corner Cone in Yellow Springs, Ohio. It's just kind of your classic uh, roadside spot. It started out in the early, or I'm sorry, it started out in like the 50s era when uh, drive ups and things like that were real popular. You know, people come cruising in in their car and, you know, get a burger and a malt or something like that. You know, it was just during the pandemic. And I, I, to be honest, never saw myself owning any type of food establishment. I've never worked in fast food or food of any sort other than I, you know, had a a waiter job or two in college. So this was a a departure on that, you know, as well as my first time managing staff of any kind, let alone a dairy bar largely has a staff of teenagers, you know, where often it's people's very first job, you know, so you've got the minutia running a business plus then you've got you know just the dynamic of having to deal with a lot of people who's you know it's a first time job and you know people bring all different types of skills and anxieties to the table with that you know you just work with people and find them their way through it but it's been a really fun process you know it's one of those things you kind of have to take on incrementally because it was it was definitely a project where there was a lot of it, it was obvious there was a lot of stuff that had been neglected for a long time. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to be one of those people that just like got in there and spent all my time, like trying to be so focused on the outside aesthetic, you know, we just wanted to get it up and running. So, I mean, I literally was able to acquire it towards the end of June last year. And we opened up Yellow Springs pride weekend, which is the weekend right before the 4th of July. Uh, so we got it open in like a week after acquiring it, which was uh, a, a bit of a feat, but was totally necessary. And this year, we've been, it's been a, a good year. We've been uh, running smooth. Awesome. I want to break both of those down in turn. You said your first job is you're a stay-at-home dad, and your kids' names start with O and E. How old are your That's kids, correct. if you don't mind me asking? I have a nine and a three-year-old. That seems like a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Yep, <laughs> that is that is true. That is true. I I'm a person that doesn't have children, so the, yeah, the idea of caring for other lives strikes me as really not difficult. Difficult, you know. That's one way to. It's just you know, it's it's a they they require your full time attention. <laughs> you know, like I mean, it's I, I don't know. I, I enjoy it, but it also, at times, you know, you want to be more intellectually stimulated or just have, feel, um, I don't know, a, a probably a, a sense of some significance beyond just your own house. <laughs> I mean, making dinner every night is significant to the people that eat it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I, you know, that was the thing about the ice cream shop and, uh, uh, the other little side gig I have, which is that they allow me to still be close to do all the the parent things that I need to do versus a traditional 40-hour-a-week job, which would have 
taken me uh, out of the community in large part because Yellow Springs is not a lot of people work here. How long have you lived in Yellow Springs? Been here nine years. No, I guess almost ten now. I take that back. Yeah, Halloween will be ten years. I was going to ask you, how long has Corner Cone been there? You're you're talking about a community that resists change. This is a staple business in the community. When did it originally open? You know, I should know that, but I don't off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up. I know it was like fifties or sixties. That's a good enough guess. Several decades is the point. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But even that being said, you know, again, it it fell into total disrepair. I mean, just the amount of basic maintenance I had to do after acquiring it, you, know, you just tell like people had just been sapping every, you know, wringing every last drop of water they could out of the place. You know, things here come at a premium, but also don't necessarily reflect a high level of quality. So, you know, that's certainly something we've been trying to change with the ice cream shop. One of the things with that is, you know, we use a much higher quality mix in a lot of places. Your standard dairy cream queen is using like a 4% butter fat mix. So it's not even technically ice cream. Because in order to be ice cream, you have to be 8%. So that was a decision we made early on was that we were going to actually offer a soft serve ice cream. So we have an 8% mix that we use. So it actually has a, a high butterfat content, which gives you a much richer flavor um, and it's just a much higher quality product. Yeah, that nice, smooth mouthfeel. Precisely, precisely. So with the new ownership, as you, the new owner, you've also changed the name of the business to honor the kids, right? O and E's, Corner Cone yep. now. Yep, I, I did, I did. Are, and, and part of that was, again, we wanted to get open really quick. And we already were kind of known in the community, so I, I needed to change the name, but I didn't necessarily want to diverge too much from what was already familiar, um, as well as, you know, with not having any restaurant experience, it wasn't like I had some, you know, business plan in my back pocket for some great restaurant that I wanted to open up, you know, we were kind of just like, all right, how can we kind of get this, the core business back up and running. Like we didn't even start offering any food stuff till the end of last summer, just because getting open in that first week was, was enough right there just with getting the ice cream going. Since, you know, the first day we opened, I think I'd poured, you know, a handful of ice cream cones in training and opened up with like two 15 year olds, <laughs> you know, and we worked Yellow Springs Pride and we ran out of ice cream by five o'clock that afternoon, you know, cause I didn't know That's how much to buy. <laughs> that works though. I mean, uh, running out tells me that you had demand. And oh yeah, we had a lot of we had a line down the block like all day. If the weather is nice in Yellow Springs, we have great demand. But we're a very weather dependent business, so we close. Yeah. We we try to make it to Halloween. That's kind of the goal every year. But at a certain point, if the weather is just not cooperating, because again, if it's rainy or really below sixty degrees. We just don't get a tremendous amount of foot traffic. Foot traffic in town goes down a lot. And that is just, that's where our business comes from. You know, yesterday was a kind of gray day and after the holidays, so we didn't have a lot of foot traffic to town, which is kind of typical for this time of the year, um, just because people are getting back into their school flow and all that kind of stuff. But it's, uh, it's, Without tourists, we would not be able to survive, I guess is what I'd say. And that's that's how it is for most of Yellow Springs. So events like Porch Fest, Street Fair, Art on the Lawn, um, uh, Yellow Springs Pride, anything that brings a significant number of people to town is really uh, a necessity for local businesses here. I mean, when Dave Chappelle was having the shows last summer, uh, you know, it's hard for me to say how much that helped me or did, didn't help me simply because I wasn't open, you know, till I, I don't have previous year's numbers to compare. <laughs> so I don't know. But I know in general, a lot of people in town said that it was tremendously helpful to their business as far as bringing, bringing in tra foot traffic. That makes sense because Yellow Springs, again, having grown up, in Xenia, so right down the road. Uh, if you're listening and you're outside of this area and you don't uh, have the context here, Yellow Springs is a small and picturesque community 
that is in its downtown, I put that in quotes because it's not really a downtown, but it is uh, the center of town portion is eminently walkable. And there's lots of shops where you can spend money on local businesses, uh, record stores, books, arts and crafts, yep. different kinds comics, of food, games. all sorts of things, comics, yeah. all sorts of things. And on a nice day, it is just a pleasant stroll around the community. Yep, you're exactly right. But it, to your point, a nice day. People come here to be outside. You know, it's not an indoor community. You know, it is not. And, you know, Porch Fest, which is coming up, is an outdoor event. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Yellow Springs Porch Fest is Saturday, the 17th of September. Uh, this episode should be up on Wednesday the 14th. So if you're in the greater Dayton area, folks, Yellow Springs Porch Fest is this weekend this Saturday. The the event starts at, I'm going to make sure I don't say this wrong, noon in Yellow Springs and continues until 7. Every hour, there's a group of musicians performing at various addresses close enough to the center of town that you could walk to all of the events if you wanted to. Yep. I will say, though, in past years, I have found a bike, if you can bring one, to be very helpful. In fact, I am I have yeah. the stage at the corner cone, but I also have another stage that I'm operating, too. Um, that's a well, let's, talk, let's talk about both of those. Yeah. Which one, is, which one is your first performance? Let's go chronologically. Yeah, so let's go with the first location, which is, oh, let me see. I've got the corner cone scheduled up here, which I've got one starting at 2 o'clock. Which I think that may be my earliest performance. It's by an artist named V3, who's a hip hop artist. Okay, so then, if you're listening, folks, two o'clock at Odie's Corner Cone, V3, who is going to be doing hip hop. And for those of you who are not in Yellow Springs, let me get you that address. It is 101 South Walnut Street. And then in the three o'clock hour, you said 110 North Winter? Yep. That is Michael Manley and Katie Harford, who do Americana and Modern Folk. It's on winter. Yeah, it's one block away. So from the O&E's Corner Cone, you can come one block west on Dayton Street, and you'll get to Winter Street, and then we're two houses up on the left after you make the right on the Winter Street. And it'll be in the backyard. There's a lovely deck and a, several very nice trees to provide some shade. You know, dep depending on the weather, it could be a warm day in September for the event. So having some shade is definitely nice. And then at four, back at O&E's Corner Cone on Walnut, I'm it's playing. You. I'm an indie. Yeah. It's me. I'm an indie rock artist. I will be playing my bass, and I have uh, two acoustic guitarists accompanying me. Though one might be playing an electric through a device that makes it sound like an acoustic. But okay. we won't be too terribly loud. Uh, because we want to make sure that if there's anyone playing within, say, six blocks, we don't want to crush them with a the full drum kit sound, right? So, I will say that they in the past have done a pretty good job of that, of spacing them out. And I think that's in part why they kind of, well, that and the switch over, do the alternating between the hours. But yeah, they've been pretty good about that, I've found. Logistically, that's got to be a challenge, right? Because, yeah, sometimes you want to play loud and if you're too close to someone that's an acoustic artist, that could be that could be not good. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, it's also the the spaces. I don't know. I, I know last year one of the bands that's playing over at the Winter Street address told me that the location there was at they were at there was the yard was was kind of cramped and there was a pond in the middle. So it was kind of weird. But you know, they may do every every place is a little bit unique. Last year at the Winter Street Address here, we actually had people on our front porch of the house. And so that was, uh, that was a, a much more intimate setting, whereas the stage uh, this year at that place, we're using the back patio, which is a much larger performance space. So I think that'll give people more room to spread out and, you know, and enjoy themselves. Plus, uh, I'm planning on allowing my kids to set up a snack stand 
over here at Winter oh, Street cool. and sell some popcorn and water and soda and whatever. You know, help, let them let them bolster the college fund a little bit. So your your second show at the Winter Street address is in the five o'clock block. Uh, Kyleel Nasser, who's an acoustic singer songwriter with some R and B vibes, according to the map. You're gonna see just you four completely different kinds of music in one day. That yes. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna be and busy really gonna... day running the shows and uh I'm sure we'll be busy at the shop as well. Or hopefully we'll be busy at the shop. But yeah, it's gonna be a busy day for Porch Fest for me, but enjoyable. Very enjoyable. So for people who wanna come down, this is a really good example of what this event is about. Our host, Matthew, is hosting two places and between the four artists he is hosting, they're all completely different. No matter what kind of music you are into, someone at Yellow Springs Porch Fest is playing it. All right. Go to the we website. Actually have five bands. Because there's one more band after you at O and E's Corner Come too. I don't know if you Oh, I missed that. that. Yeah, I think Six it's called o'clock. Long, Let me make sure. Long Elevator. Let me maybe. Gotta plug them too. O and E's Corner Come is six o'clock. Wrong elevator band, quirky eclectic combo there's five different kinds of music you're going to see that's pretty cool indeed indeed is this your first time hosting porch fest no i hosted last summer too um and i was actually gonna only offer one of the houses this year but uh they they had such an overwhelming amount of interest from artists that they asked me if i could offer the second space again too uh this time around I want to say there's some there's over 70 artists this year. Yeah. Um, that they they're I mean so that's just tremendous you know participation from the community, especially when you figure Yellow Springs is only 3,500 people. Now, granted, it's not as though all the artists are coming from Yellow Springs, but but a very very good number are. Um, you know, and in the immediate local community, like you said, I think you're from Xenia. I don't know if you still live there or not, but you know, Xenia is 10 minutes down the road. Yep, I currently live in Fairborn, but one of the uh, one of the criteria for applying to Yellow Springs Porch Fest is you have to have some kind of connection to that community, and you need to explain this to the folks that are selecting the musicians. So, growing up in Xenia, went to Yellow Springs an awful lot. Now that I'm grown, I've played my share of shows at Yellow Springs over at Peaches. I've okay. gone to my share of shows over at Peaches. So. I'm in the neighborhood. I enjoy seeing shows in Yellow Springs. I enjoy walking around through Yellow Springs. I love the winds, which I don't get there as often as I would like. And from the point of view of an artist, Porch Fest is just an amazing event. You feel good playing music to people from the community. It, it's the kind of event that even if I wasn't playing, I would go because I enjoy it that much. Um, but you, you see oh, it definitely. from the other side. You're a host. Uh, tell me about, uh, so last year, your experience as a host. What did, what did you enjoy about letting a bunch of musicians and other people come to your establishment? Oh, well, I think it, you know, definitely created a, a vibe, you know, for a day. The place was, had a more of a sense of community, just the way we set up all the tables and chairs and everything. So they were focused more on the stage. You know, whereas it's normally set up more like a cafe style where you've just got, you know, your little four tops or two tops or whatever. You know, this was set up where everybody kind of had one focus as opposed to just a bunch of individual pots. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool, at least at the shop. Um, over here at the house, we only hosted one place or one person. And it, he was uh, he was so easy. <laughs> he just did an acoustic set. I think he maybe plugged into a, an amp, but he needed an electrical cord. That was like the extent of what he needed from me. <laughs> so he was now at the, at the shop. We had some uh, some larger arrangements, but again, they were all easy peasy. Everybody showed up super early, was super professional. You know, got a hold of me ahead of time. A lot of them, some people have even had uh, out to the spaces in advance because they wanted to come out and see. You know, where they were going to be playing. Um, so it's, I, I, as, as a host, um, not only have the artists made it easy, but the organizing group has made it really easy too. They've been very clear with the communication. 
very prompt in responses and thorough when they put the information out. It's very detailed. So yeah, I've I've got no no complaints whatsoever. So listeners, especially those of you who live in the greater Dayton area, this Saturday, you want a good time that's, by the way, free to attend because it doesn't cost you any money to go see all of these talented artists. It will cost you money to get delicious ice cream at O&E's Corner Cone, but it should because it's delicious. Matthew and I invite you to come out, right? We want people to come see us. We would love to host everybody. We would come show them Yellow Springs, show them, uh, you know, uh, a wide array of artists, uh, all with unique uh, takes uh, on music and uh, performance. And, you know, it's, I pretty much, I can't imagine it not being a good time. I'm looking forward to it. These are a big part of the lifeblood of Yellow Springs is having events like this. You know, we definitely missed having this kind of stuff in COVID. Because, you know, when you are a small community, coming together and, you know, having shared experiences is, is a big part of, of how that exists and how that persists over time. So it's wonderful to have these kind of events. And like I said, I'm um, really looking forward to it and uh, really appreciate you, you know, not only volunteering your uh, artistic abilities to come and entertain people, but doing things like this podcast, you know, to promote and help get the word out. You know, that's something that's really helpful for us, too. You know, the organizing committee gets the word out, but they have 70 different artists that all have their own fan bases and support groups also advocating for the event, you know, really helps to amplify the power of the of, of our reach. It's such a good time. And I always feel good when I play a show like that. You're out with the community. It's yeah, I get warm, fuzzy feelings. So, so, Matthew, before I let you go, I'm going to ask you two questions that I ask all of my guests. So these are like the only standard things that I drop into every episode now. So the first one is, what's the first song you can remember ever hearing in your life? As far back as you can remember. Gosh, I, to be honest, it's probably some country music song because that's what my parents listen to. You know, and as far as what it was, I have no, I, no idea. Something on the radio, maybe some Garth Brooks or something. <laughs> I was going to guess Hank Williams, but yeah, I'm Garth not that Brooks. Old. If, uh, not that old. Okay, <laughs> I am. So, <laughs> All right, so follow-up question. What did your childhood smell like? What did my childhood smell like? You know what? Probably potpourri. <laughs> we lived with my grandparents growing up, and I remember, like, that's a distinct, you know, smell. I was even talking to my wife about it because we were in a department store the other day, and I, I caught the whiff of potpourri, and I was like, smells just like Grandma's house. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come talk to me. I'm looking forward to playing Olenice Corner Cone. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the other artists that are going to play your your hosting sites and also strolling around, you know, after I get set up and I don't have to worry about that, strolling around and catching as many of the other artists playing Yellow Springs Porch Press as I can. Again, listeners, come out Saturday and, and see us. The festivities start at noon. The festivities at O&E's Corner Cone start at 2. Come and meet Matthew. He's nice. He'll say hi. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks so much, Mike. Really appreciate it. Thanks again to Matthew for joining me. And of course, big thanks to him for allowing musicians to play on not one, but two of his properties this weekend in Yellow Springs. Hey, some of my favorite musicians are playing this event. Mariah J is going to be there. The Nautical Theme is going to be there. Rachel Literal is going to be there. Novena is going to be there. These are people I like to see, and I hope you will like to see them too this weekend. If you're in the Dayton area, come on out to Yellow Springs Porch Fest. It's free. Again, the festivities start at noon. You can find me at O&E's Corner Cone at 4 o'clock p.m. I really hope to see you Saturday. Bye.